Hello friends, I'm Priscilla Pearl. I'm an avid knitter and vintage enthusiast from Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada. I love to knit from both vintage and modern patterns to create items that complement my vintage inspired wardrobe. If you want to see more of what I'm up to, I can be found on both Instagram and Ravelry as The Lavender Pearl. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about two finished objects and two works in progress. I will have links to everything I talk about in the description box below. The Knit Picks link will be the only one that is an affiliate link. I make a small commission from any sales from that link at no cost to you. By purchasing from that link, you help support this channel, but there's no pressure to use that link. I am dying to tell you all about my first finished object. It's the Rosemary Fisherman Sweater by Poison Girls. I'm absolutely obsessed with this sweater and I've worn it almost every time that I've left the house since I finished knitting it. I used Juniper Moon Farm Santa Cruz Organic Merino in the colorway Indigo. Santa Cruz Organic Merino is a 100% merino worsted weight yarn. The pattern suggests an Aran weight yarn, but this is a little bit thicker of a worsted weight yarn and it worked out perfectly. I was able to get gauge easily on the recommended needle size and I'm really happy with how the cables look and how the fabric feels. This yarn is quite soft and it was really lovely to work with. It was my first time using this yarn and I'll definitely keep it in mind for future projects. I typically prefer darker colors, but I didn't want to use too dark of a yarn for this sweater because I wanted to make sure that my cables and baubles showed up well. I didn't want to go through all the trouble of knitting them, only to have them not be that visible. I feel like this blue is the perfect happy medium. It's not too light that it's too similar to my skin tone, but it's not too dark either. This sweater is knit bottom up in the round. I added a little bit of extra length to my sleeves because I have long arms and I added about 2 inches to the body. Because I wanted my sweater to be more of an outdoors outer layer, I wanted to make sure that it would cover my stomach and that I could wear any pants that I want with it. I'm really happy with the length of my sweater, but because I added a couple of inches, I ended up using more yarn than I'd anticipated and I ended up having to buy an extra skein of yarn. Luckily, I was able to get the same dye lot, so it wasn't an issue. With my sleeve modifications before blocking, my sleeves sat right at the ends of my wrists. After blocking, my sleeves grew a little bit and now they cover the bottoms of my hands. I kind of love it and it makes this sweater even cozier. It was very easy to modify the lengths of the sleeves and the body to get my sweater to fit just right. The pattern has lengths listed from the bottom to the underarms for both the sleeves and the body, so it was easy enough to figure out how much extra length I wanted and add that before the shaping increases. I'm the type of knitter that typically shies away from projects that look too complicated. I'm more of a TV knitter and I prefer patterns that I can either memorize or just glance at here and there. I was surprised by how easy this pattern is. The cable and bobble pattern is an 8 round repeat and the cables and bobbles are only worked on 2 out of the 8 rounds. Once the pattern was set up, it was easy to read my work and I didn't need to look at the cable pattern too often. This pattern is the perfect balance of interesting but not too much work for me. I really enjoyed knitting it. This pattern even comes with a video course that explains the main steps in this pattern, so even if you're just an enthusiastic beginner, you could knit it. Overall, I'm really happy with how my Rosemary Fisherman sweater turned out. I'm a big fan of Poison Girls and I've knit a lot of her patterns. Some of my favorite garments were knit from her patterns. I think this sweater might take the cake though and it might be my new favorite sweater. Since I run warm, it's too thick for me to wear indoors, but it's been a perfect single outer layer for me to wear in the gorgeous spring weather we've been having lately. Since I knit mine a little bit longer, it doesn't go over a circle skirt well, but it looks good with all of my pants and it would look good with a pencil skirt as well. I've mostly been wearing it with my black high-waisted skinny pants. If I knit it the recommended length, it would probably sit a little bit better over circle skirts and dresses. I highly recommend this pattern. I had so much fun knitting it and I love my finished objects. Next, I'm going to tell you all about this shawl that I recently finished knitting. The pattern is Spring Awakens by Aroa Knits. I used Pearl Scout Yarns Starry Fingering in the colorway Luna. 
It's an 80% eco superwash merino and 20% nylon fingering weight yarn. This colorway is a gorgeous dark purple and it's based off of Luna from Sailor Moon. Pearl Scout Yarns uses natural dyes and this colorway was dyed using logwood and Saxon blue extract. This yarn is so soft and it was a joy to knit with. It's a fairly solid color, but it's slightly tonal so it still has that special hand dyed feeling while being very versatile. I love this yarn and Victoria, the dyer from Pearl Scout Yarns is very sweet. She has a podcast on YouTube and I'll be sure to have a link to that below in case you want to see more of what she's up to. I'll have a link below to both her website and by stitchwool.ca, which is a Canadian local yarn store that carries her yarn. Spring Awakens is a crescent-shaped shawl with a lace panel in the center and two stockinette panels on either side. Once the lace was set up, it was super easy to keep track of. I just had to glance at the pattern at the start of each right side row. This pattern was perfect for TV knitting, but with the lace, it was a little bit more interesting and I never got bored of it. One of the things that drew me to this pattern is it's very easy to make it either a little bit smaller or a little bit larger so you can get the most out of your yardage. It would also be very easy to knit it in a different weight of yarn as long as you changed your needle size to match. I think this shawl would be super cute and cozy in a worsted weight yarn. I ended up making mine the same size as the pattern. I could have kept knitting mine a little bit more, but I wanted to make sure that I had enough yarn left over to make tassels along the bottom edge. I overestimated how much yarn that the tassels would take, so I have a little bit left over from my next scrap project. My tassels are around 4 inches long. I wrapped my yarn around a 4 inch book and snipped the bottom, which created 8 inch long strings. I used two 8 inch long strands for each tassel and I folded them in half creating four strands each. I strung my tassels through every third cast off stitch with a crochet hook. So far I haven't trimmed my tassels. I think they look pretty even so I'll probably just leave them as is. I had a lot of fun knitting this shawl and I'm really happy with how it turned out. This pattern was very enjoyable and I would definitely knit it again but maybe in a different weight of yarn next time. My finished object is gorgeous and it sits over my shoulders beautifully. This crescent shawl is a little bit wider than some other crescent shawls that I've knit and I love it. I find a wider shawl sits over my shoulders a little bit better and I don't have to fuss with it as much. With the tassels along the bottom edge, I feel like I'm living my Stevie Nicks fantasy. Since we last talked, I cast on my vintage dress with detachable shawl projects. The pattern that I'm knitting is style number 1806 from Bernat book number 121. It is a vintage pattern from the 60s. I'm using Holstgarn Super Soft in the colorway Prussian. Super Soft is a 100% wool light fingering weight yarn. It is sold with the spinning oil still in it and it blooms once it's been washed and blocked. Prussian is a super dark blue with maybe a hint of purple in it. It's so dark, it's almost black. This yarn is nice to work with. It's not quite as super soft as the name implies, but I'm still happy with it. I find it does leak a little bit of color while I'm working with it though, and it leaves blue marks on my hands where I tension my yarn. I'm not too bothered by that though. I'm gonna need a lot of yarn for this project, so I bought three cones. I'm really happy with the cost of this yarn and I like how the knitted fabric that it creates looks and feels. I'm very happy with my yarn choice for this pattern and I'm obsessed with this color. Like most vintage patterns, this dress and cape are knit flat in multiple pieces and then seamed together. The dress is knit in two main pieces, the front and the back but there's also some facings and bias bands and a belt that are knit separately. I just started the back panel. It's knit bottom up and I've knit the hem and a few inches of the skirt. The dress is a pretty straightforward knit. I've never done a hem, facings, or put a zipper in any of my knit projects before though, so I'm a little bit excited and nervous for that. I appreciate that vintage knitting patterns have these extra finishing steps to create a detailed finished object that will wear well. 
When I talked about this project in my last video, I mentioned that I wasn't sure where to put the zipper because one of the finishing steps is to insert the zipper, but it doesn't say where. I noticed that there's a back opening just above the underarm shaping and it doesn't say anything about closing that, so I'm starting to think that that's where the zipper is going to go. It feels like the fabric has quite a bit of stretch, so I think the waist should stretch enough to go over my chest when I'm taking it on and off. The cape is knit in three main pieces, the back, left front, and right front, but there's also some facings and bias bands that are knit separately. The cape attaches to the dress by crochet buttons. The pattern says that you can line the cape if you like. I'm probably going to finish knitting before I decide if I'm going to line it or not. That makes me really nervous, so I would probably have to get help with that. I'm not that far into this project yet, but so far I'm really enjoying it. I'm so excited about it and that makes me really happy when I'm working on it. It's going to take me a while to finish this project because it's using teeny tiny needles and a very fine weight of yarn. The knitting itself is super basic though, so I'm not limited as to when I can work on it. It's a lot of stockinette with a few increases and decreases for shaping, so it's really good TV knitting or for when I'm doing Zoom calls. I'm really excited to keep working on this project and to share this journey with you. I recently cast on the Best Beret by James N. Watts. I'm using Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted in black. Wool of the Andes Worsted is a 100% wool worsted weight yarn. I've used it many times and it's one of my favorite worsted weight wool yarns. It's not quite as soft as merino, but I still find it pretty soft and it's nice and durable. I like the price of this yarn, but since I'm in Canada, I have to keep an eye on the exchange rate when I order. The Knit Picks website does collect Canadian sales taxes though, so us Canadians don't have to worry about duties. I've been hit with some pretty bogus duties charges from some websites, so I really appreciate that. I hate surprises. The Best Beret has been on my knit list for a while now, but I was going through a real sweater kick and have just gotten back into accessories again. I am knitting this beret as part of the Feminets Make Along. It's hosted by Pondered Ply and Marie Jelenka on Instagram. They are encouraging participants to craft their own feminist uniform, whatever that means to you, and to participate in conversations about feminism. I am knitting the best beret for my feminist uniform because a stylish hat makes me feel more confident and like I can tackle anything. Berets just make me feel like a stylish badass. I am knitting the dramatic silhouette so I can be more extra. This pattern has two band sizes for different head sizes as well as two silhouettes. There is the classic and dramatic silhouette. The dramatic silhouette gets larger than the classic and lives up to its dramatic name. I'm debating on finishing mine with a stock or a pom-pom. Pom-poms are cute, but they feel more wintry and I want to be able to wear this hat throughout the year. What do you think? Pom-pom or stock? I'm a good portion of the way through this hat so far. It's a pretty quick and easy knit. It starts with an I-cord for around the head and it ends with a stock. I am just starting the decreases now. I did run into an issue where my eye cord did get gauge, but it wasn't quite stretchy enough to fit around my head. I started again with a size up needle and it worked out perfectly. I've been really enjoying this knit so far and I can't wait to wear the finished beret. I should have it done by my next video so I can show you how it turns out. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to my channel. It lets me know that you're interested and by subscribing, it'll make it easier for you to find my future videos. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.